Thanks to kick off. Do you, want, do you want us to kick off? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Okay, Paddy and Willie, uh, we're two of the four 50 year old kids uh, that have been set this up. Anyway, so there yeah. are, uh, as I say, four oh, of right. us that have, um, broadly speaking, oh, reached the end yeah, of our sort of corporate type careers oh, and decided that it would be a good idea to do something that's a lot more fun. So we made the decision um, September 09 to do this. We found this particular site uh, in November 09. We then applied for planning permission, having decided that yes, we really were going to go for it, and lobbied the local residents, because you'll be aware that we're literally surrounded by residents on three sites. Um, they seem to be positive, even though the previous planning application for this site, which was for a nursery type arrangement, had been rejected. So we thought, well, the brewery will be fine. And sure, sure enough, they were very positive about it. So on the basis of their feedback, we ordered the brewery, which we'll see in a bit. And we got the go-ahead in February, the planning permission, which was a huge relief for Willie, because otherwise this lot was in his garden. <laughs> and we got the keys to the door on the 1st of March last year. Um, you'll see what we've done and what we've built when we go round, but uh, we were brewing by the, the first brew was on the 12th of April. Backgrounds to everyone very briefly, I've been in brewing all my life, so I've sort of trained to brew and been all around the country at different breweries. Um, Willie brewed um, with me 25 years ago, so he's also a trained brewer, but then made the fatal mistake of leaving the brewing and going to work for Mars. Um, and Willie lives just uh, on Alma Road, not far from here at all. Um, while Willie was at Mars, I believe he got trained as an accountant, or he always pretends he did, so <laughs> we've got a bit of sort of finance skill in the business. Um, Willie's friend at Mars, Jim, is an engineer. And Jim's brother, who also worked at Mars, is a marketeer. So, as I say, 450 year old gigs with what we hope is a regional, reasonable spread of skills to do this. Uh, why here? Um, well, there are about 760 micros in the country now. There's a massive explosion of microbrewing. And in fact, probably got too many now. And when I say too many, purely not, not from an interest point of view, that's great, but actually, they're very much, we're all very much stepping on each other's toes. Mm. The reason for putting the brewery here is Windsor, we believe, is a bit of a sweet spot. But if you look at the distribution of other microbrewers, there's a whole band of them to our west, and you'll be familiar with a lot of those, Rebellion at Marlow and Loddon and mm. uh, in Reading, and then going further south down to um, Ascotales, etc. But they're at least 10 miles away and further. If you then go to the little place to our east, London, there is hardly anything between us and uh, Tower Brill, London Bridge. Um, there is a little place called Fuller's. <laughs> there is um, uh, the um, Sandbrooks Brewery, mm. uh, which is in Battersea, and there is Twickenham Fine Ales. And that's it between us and the centre. So we think we've got, out of those 760 breweries, quite a nice position to put a brewery. Plus, of course, all the things that go with Windsor. Effectively, we've got a brand to start with. And secondly, we've got, the, hopefully, the tourist trade and everything else. So that's why we're here. That's who we are, etc. Um, we'll see all the plants and the process when we go outside. But I thought the other thing would be worthwhile, people always ask about, is a bit about materials. Um, we brew with uh, malt. Does anyone know what malt is? Uh, barley that's mm. been fermented. Barley that's been, it's not been fermented. Anyone? Sprout, sprout. Sprout. Absolutely spot on. Mm. Does anyone know why they do that to it? Right. Well, a barley seed has, looks a bit like my hand, it has got a tiny little plant on the edge of it and a huge lump of starch, and the starch is inert. If you ever tried mucking around in the kitchen and mixing water into flour, you quickly get glue. Gungy mess that you can't do a lot with. 
And however, it, that very inertness is why it's fantastic for a seed. It can lie in the ground and do very little until the plant's ready. When the plant's ready, it says it's springtime, I am now going to use my starch. What it does is it produces masses of enzymes which can break the starch down into sugars. I know this might seem a bit boring, but I will get there in a minute. So malting is taking all those little barley seeds and fooling them into thinking it's spring. And they do that by keeping it cool to make, make it think it's winter. They warm it up slightly and they dip it in water and they dry it out. And they dip it in water and they dry it out. And then they spread it out on the floor. And those little barley shoots go, whoopee, it's springtime. And they start to grow and they release masses of enzymes into that starch. And just as it does that, we kill it. And we kill it by kilning it, by drying it. The result is the little shoot drops off, the little rootlet that's just begun to grow drops off, and what we now have is predominantly starch, but a few sugars, but masses of enzymes ready for action. And we buy our malt from one of the only three floor maltings left in the country, which is a very traditional way of making malt, in Warminster. And we buy lots of different varieties, and I'll just pass some around so anyone who's brave enough can have a taste. Please do it, won't kill you. Just make sure I'm getting the right way around. Right, so the first one is a typical pale ale mould. It tastes quite flowery, quite um, a little bit like malt, and by malt I mean by um, the way, <laughs> I always describe it as a white stuff in milky ways, <laughs> but Horlicks people describe it as etc. But it doesn't taste that sweet, and the reason it doesn't taste that sweet is it's mostly still starch. We can let do lots of things though to the malt to give the final thing different flavours. The first one, the reason I had to smell it, it looks almost identical. So if you shake it a bit and have a smell, that's a smoked Hang malt. On. Okay, so you might just be able to get the sort of characters you get on smoked cheese, etc. Alternatively, while that one's coming around. You can kiln it to different degrees, and obviously the more you kiln it, the more you um, heat it, the more biscuity type flavours. So again, you can taste these. This is called a caramel, and that would be used in our lightest beer. Give it a bit of flavour, but not a lot of colour. Alternatively, you can take the grain, very wet and sweet as it is malted, so it contains a lot of watery sugar and you can put it into a fierce kiln and that causes the sugar to caramelise a bit like when you have your dessert in the oven come over and get overheated and this makes what we call here a dark crystal malt and I love this one and you must taste this one it tastes of caramel and of slight almost toffee type characters what would we use that in? something like Guardsman Bitter, Best Bitter, a copper coloured beer that needs some real full body and flavour within it. Excuse me, is that the way it's delivered to you like that? Yeah, oh, not, not in individual glasses, no, but... Careful, it comes ready crushed. It comes oh, crushed, yes, not we're, not, here, we're not milling it here. Yeah. Lastly, and I'm, I'm just trying to give you some variety in all this, there are actually hundreds of different moulds, so I'm trying to I'm just show you. Alternatively, you could dry the mould very slowly, but then kiln it very fully, and this time you wouldn't crystallise it, but you'd, de you'd develop full roasted flavours. And this one, you can taste it if you like, but probably best just to smell it, it's called chocolate mould. And the reason it's called chocolate mould, it hasn't got any chocolate in it, but it ha it's developed flavours a bit like dark chocolate. Some people even describe it as coffee-like. Okay, so that gives you an idea of a range of different <laughs> malts that we use. We also use hops. Does anyone know what a hop is? It's a plant. It's a plant. And what's the actual hop? Movement. It's a flower, someone said a flower. Yeah. Yeah. So these grow in hedgerows, 
Um, and there are quite a few grow around here. Every now and then someone turns up to the door and says, I found some hops, do you want them for your brewing? Which is very good of them. Um, and indeed, the little pot outside the front door, if you remember when you walk out, it's got some shoots that that big so far of this year's hop. It's now started to grow. Hopefully it'll grow about 18 foot during the year. It, hopefully it'll have some hops on in about September. Then it will die back and you won't be able to see it at all and off it will go again next year. So when it gets up to September or so, it flowers if it is a female plant, male and female plant, and it forms, and of course I can't find some very good ones now, it forms little tiny flower cones. Willie, do you want to do the other side? So I want to give everyone yeah. one, one cone. So if you look at this, they're dried by and crushed together. So I just want you to be able to see, they're very difficult to see. So <laughs> well, because they don't, have, they don't have flowers if they are male plants. And some of these, are, I'm afraid you are you're down to a few bits here. Let's get some more. Try and pick out a single flower. And don't, don't crush it up yet, because I'm going to describe. So it's a little flower, it's a cone. And inside that cone, well, there are two reasons why we use hops. Does anyone know what the two reasons might be? What what two things flavor. do we get from flavor? flavor. Yeah. So particularly, what type of flavor would you describe from a hop? Bitter. Bitter. Bitterness. Bitter. So one of the main thing reasons we use hops is to give the beer bitterness. Does anyone know what the other reason is? Color. Color. No, it's not actually. And you may may sort of confuse it with with flavor. It's the other side of things. It's the aroma. So now what I want you to do is take your little hop and I want you to crush it, if I get one of hand, quite tightly in your hand, really grind it in. Don't worry about the carpet, I don't have to hoover it, someone else. Really grind it in, you should almost feel it go a little bit sort of greasy. Yeah? Now, if you now smell it, if you now smell it, that is what we mean by a hoppy aroma. Okay? So when people describe a beer as being hoppy, they don't mean it's bitter, they mean it's got that hop aroma. Mm. There are literally, again, hundreds of varieties of hop, and each one will give you a slightly different hop aroma. And we're very keen on the hops here, Willie and I. In the about 25 years of brewing that I've done on big brewing plants, I've used about five or six hop varieties. In this year, we've used, I think, seven so far, <laughs> and we can't wait to try the next ones. There's just so much fun in picking different hops. And when you taste the beers, I'm going to describe the hops on them and see if you can pick out those flavours. Now, the second thing that people said was it gave, gave you a flavour. So you now take your palm of your hand and give it a good lick across that bit. Swallow look at me and pull a face because after a while you should taste the bitterness on it and it may take a little while but you should get it on the side of your mouth and at the back anyone got that yeah good okay that's as much beer as you're gonna get we have to extract that bitterness in the process and the process that we use is boiling it and it makes it very much more bitter that process Final thing on ingredients, people always ask are the other two ingredients we use. Boiling hops, do, are they uh, grown in Kent or do you import them? We, we buy our hops from what's called a hop factor, a hop merchant, who's actually based in, in Worcestershire. Malvins, which is Worcestershire. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And there are two main areas for growing. One is Hereford Worcestershire, the other one is Kent. Yeah. The, what the um, factor that we're used is based in uh, Marvin and he grew, he buys his hops both from the UK and from abroad. Some of the hops we buy are UK based and will come from Kent. Lots of the ones we're buying for aroma we're buying from around the world because different climates give different hop mm. characters. So just briefly, in Guardsman Best Bitter, a typical English style Best Bitter, we're using Fuggles, Goldings, very much British based type hops. Something like um, the Black IPA, Cascadian mm -hmm. hop from North America. Okay. 
two other ingredients people normally ask about. Water One is sugar. water. Yeah. We don't use any sugar, but no, and, and that's not for a um, uh, uh, cultural reason or whatever, just we haven't yet produced a beer that I want to use as sugary, but we definitely will do at some stage. Some brewers do typically some syrup or Correct. And, not, and you know, you, every now and then you'll, you'll come across someone who says, well, you can't use sugar in brewing. Absolutely. You, and some beers, so, you so really need to. The fermentation comes from the malt? Absolutely. And I'll describe, you know that, that packet of starch, where I'll describe in the process how we get it into sugars. So the main one is water, which we call liquor. So every time I mention liquor tonight, sorry, but I'm talking about water. <coughs> The liquor that we're using here is Towns water. Gosh, that must be bloody awful. Thames water, etc. This is the eighth town I've brewed in. I think this is the best quality liquor I've yet brewed with. All right. Wales and Tatler, isn't it? Well, I think uh, it's quite interesting. Is, is it is very, very hard, and we have to treat it for the hardness, and we have to put back the salts and that that we need. But the underlying water is remarkably good. I remember being in Willie's kitchen once and getting samples of water um, and I said I want a bottle of water every day, I want to taste it, I want to know whether the water is okay before we build a bloody brewery etc. Actually, best blooming water to come across. I thought sure Trent water was the best. Burton, no, it depends what you try. Well, Bur <laughs> Burton, it's not Trent that's the water that they use, it's the, it's the borehole liquor from below uh, Burton on Trent. That's pretty good. I've never brewed in Burton, by the way, so that's yeah, possibly why I'm saying that. But that's borehole liquor. Borehole liquor generally can be very good because it can be very consistent and it can already have the salts you want. Okay. And the reason why Burton on Trent is very good is that it has high levels of sulfate, which are particularly good for certain styles of beer. What people do is treat their liquor to get the right spectrum of salts to produce different types of beer. So all we're doing here is we're, we're um, uh, taking out the uh, strong alkalinity that's in the water and then adding the same salts that if we were yes, to sir. produce some sort of um, pale ale, yeah. very much like Burton, then we would what's called Burtonize the Charlie water, in the add the gypsum and um, calcium chloride that we want to achieve that. Okay, second one is yeast, uh, the, the material, <coughs> the yeast we're using presently is comes in a dried form because we're still starting up and our brewing is not every week at the same times etc. Very soon we're hoping to have our own yeast that we just cycle around and keep going continuously. But at present we're literally, as you would as a home brewer, using a yeast that you're preparing for that particular brew. Any questions about what we've done, why we've done it, and the I've raw material. Enzymes now. Have you killed them off with the heat process? No. Uh, sorry, the, the enzymes are very much alive within the malt and ready to be used. Um, we do stop them during our process because there comes a point when we want to do exactly that to stop them carrying on. Okay. How do you maintain the consistency of the flavour in the particular type of beer? Um, yeah, when you're obviously doing batches, so you're sort yeah, of and, you're, batch. and you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. You, and, and you're absolutely right. right. The raw right. materials here. Yeah. Can you tell us, gentlemen, to take a sample of all <laughs> <laughs> the raw materials that we're using? You're absolutely right. Vary. Yeah. And if you think of each batch of barley, it's come from a different field, different farm. It's been malted at a different time. Um, how do we deal with that? Well, we're constantly assessing the beers. Mainly, I have to say, in a brewery like this, organoleptically, i.e. we taste the blooming beers and make decisions about those beers. Mm. But there are certain uh, analysis that we get from the suppliers and we can make certain adjustments like that. So, for example, the hop varieties, we get an analysis of how much bitter um, uh, alpha acid, as it's called, that they contain. And if we move a batch and it's very much higher, we can adjust the addition rate to cope with that. So we're constantly trying to adjust things. Balancing the things. Absolutely. And it's not just the raw materials. Yeah. In the summer, it's <coughs> yeah, obviously yeah, a hell of a lot yeah, warmer yeah, than yeah, in the sure. winter. <coughs> so we have to change things yeah. all the time. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I suggest we split into two groups because the plants um, sort of involve.